work with it. That it's not it's not that you first experience of, of art, and this seems pretty common. It's kind of interesting, uh, and this is I, you know I, I I'm not an artist like you are. Um, I, I I do enjoy painting. I used, at one point I thought I might become one, but that never never uh, materialized. Um, uh, but my experience of, of art, and this seems pretty common, um, is that uh, you often discover the idea uh, as you as you work with it. That it's not it's not that you first have an idea and then you apply it, but that somehow the, the very idea itself comes to expression in a way that can take the artist himself by a certain surprise. That that um, uh, it's still a manifest. It's not just self-expression. I mean, some people will interpret that as just being. Um, you know, arbitrary creativity. It's 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 still truth centered and truth grounded, but it's a kind of truth that is manifest, revealed and manifest in the real thing um, that you can then think about afterwards. Would would you yeah. accept? No. Well, like he Heidegger. That? Yeah, Heidegger talks about the notion of gathering, right? So it's yeah. like w the way in which it's an unveiling is that is that it, it gathers elements together towards and, and it reveals it ends up revealing a purpose as you're gathering them together so you could you can understand it as an emergent from an emergent perspective and from a kind of top-down perspective where from an emergent perspective you have all these things coming together in love mm -hmm. and then it's then manifesting uh, an, uh, a hidden reason as they come together and then the other way to understand it is from the top-down perspective, which is Not it's like it's like a head finding a body Lord. or a husband finding a wife. It's like an idea coming into the world and and joining itself with a uh, with matter. And so I think both of those are are perfectly are perfectly good ways to explain it. Yeah. But if you if you think about like they'll always be. So let's say even the the way you talk about it, which is which is a, there's this modern, it's a more modern way of understanding oh, art, which is this kind of like a you know ec improvisational approach, yeah. which then reveals a pattern that you hadn't thought about, ha haven't thought about, right? It's almost like a, it's a form, it's almost like a form of divination, right? It's like you cast the bones, yeah. and then you watch the bones move, and then you see. Oh, yeah. oh, it's like there's something there, there's some pattern, and then you start to draw the lines between the pattern, uh, and then you kind of are surprised to find what, what is being revealed. So in that sense, that type of art making is is closer to divination in, in that sense. But then you, even that, you would need to have the art, right? So if you, if you yeah. can't do it, yeah. Then you're not right. going to do anything, right? Yeah, you right, can right. kind of see it, but if you can't, if you don't have the skill, if you don't have that art in you, then even if you have this revelation of some pattern that you hadn't thought about, you need the skill. So it's it's still even if you're it's an emergent uh, thing, you also need that top-down control in order to to make it happen. I yeah, I that that's I would absolutely agree with with that. This, this idea that you're sort of generating order simply from below is incoherent ultimately it never really works out there's always going to be a kind of a, a, a from above dimension i, I think that's um, but the, the modern artist did everything to attain pure Remember, so i don't know if you know the process uh, yeah. it's fun to do like i don't know if you know the process there of a cadaver ski which no was age. which came about with he the was, with the um surrealist that? which was what you would do is you take a piece of paper you'd fold it and then we would each start i would start a drawing and then I would leave just a little bit of the drawing left so that you can see, but you can't see what I did. And then you would continue the lines and make something and then leave a little bit for the other person. And at the end, you unfold it and then you have a, a kind of hybrid monster. But then what you're surprised is that you realize that often there's actually a connection between a surprising connection that happens between between the different elements. Yeah. And that's why I mean that, that it's closer to, to the way yeah. that ancient would have done divination. That's similar. Yeah, I, I'd want to try to steer between that because I that th there's no governing idea. There has to be a governing idea, or else, or else, you know. I, I think um, I don't know if you recall the TV series uh, from a few years ago, Lost. That kind yeah. of and I, you know, I, I remember at a certain point really getting into that. Um, uh, uh, it was it was absolutely compelling, but at a certain point, the compellingness of it just disappeared. Yeah, and I think that was when you know. 
the audience collectively began to realize that they didn't know where they were going. They don't know where they're going. They're they just were like making it up, and, you know, um, an episode by episode. And I mean, immediately the drama disappears. It no longer has, it's no longer mysterious. Or, there has to be a governing idea. But what, what I what I would want to avoid on the, on the flip side is somehow that you, you've got the concept that the, that the artwork is simply a, a physical translation of a concept. There, there's, no. there's it contributes more than that somehow right there has to be a there has to be a play between yeah. between the two i always i think like i've been thinking a lot about beauty uh, i've been thinking a lot about beauty because on the one hand you know i i remember seeing you know like the kind of platonic idea right that beauty is the is the is the expression uh of the infinite something like that and i always thought well that's a really interesting that's a good it's a good d description of beauty but then I also, I realized that I had a tendency to describe beauty very much top down. It's like beauty is when you see harmony, beauty is when you see order, beauty. But I realized that actually, you know what? That's not true. It's not, it's not actually what you perceive as beauty. Beauty is something like harmony joined to a particular. Yeah. And so, and so it's like, it's, it's integrated, uh, it's integrated harmony into a, into the co contingency of a particular place. A particular thing and that's when you actually perceive beauty so something that is actually too perfect and too balanced is is monstrous yeah but you need this weird this weird like this weird discussion between what the particular material space um situation whatever offers and the pattern which kind of comes down and, ma and, ma and is married to it it's like when the when the absolute shines through the particular that you see beauty you could yeah but it, the particular plays a part in it right because exactly like if, they, if there's secrecy. no particular the absolute can't manifest itself and, and there's also a way in which the infinite also appears mysteriously in in an aspect of idiosyncrasy that is properly there right right, right. like the idea of uh you know th this weird idea like if you read in this in the in the pro i think it's in the proverbs where it says you know the it says something like the gray hair like the person's white hair is the person's glory. and it's like it's a beautiful image because on the one hand it's like your hair turns white so it turns into light but at the same time it's you dying and it's like actually your dying is your glory and so it's like as you settle into a kind of particularity that's what kind of shows your particular glory. So it's a, it's an interesting, but it, but it obviously can be disconnected from from the universal. But it has to, it has to, it has both at the same time. Yeah. You know, along, along these lines, uh, there's there's a, uh, the, the best, most compelling interpretation of beauty that I have read um, is uh, from a thinker I think needs more attention in this regard, and that's Friedrich Schiller. And, and um, you mentioned the play. It's a big, big, has this definition on, on the surface the definition doesn't sound like much but when, you, when he explains it it really becomes fascinating he says that beauty is the appearance of freedom and what he means by that is is jonathan in a way it's a it's a another way of saying the, the very point that you made so he said um you know imagine just a, a, a straight a straight line and a, a curving line um uh, the curving line, he says, is more beautiful than the straight line. And, and why is that? The straight line represents a kind of an order that imposes itself sort of irrespective of the particularity of the matter there. It just mechanically is there and, and um, uh, in a way allows uh, allows nothing of the uh, of, of the matter to, to, to appear. The curved line is is the triumph of order, but it's a triumph of order precisely in the the particularity and the constraints of the matter, where the very constraints of the matter become uh, a, a means of expressing um, the, the the freedom. So you get this incredible um, uh, marriage. You use that word marriage. I think it's beautiful here of form and matter, the from above, the from below, the concept and the the, the, the practice. The I mean, all these things. That, yeah universality in the particular somehow that beauty is where it all really comes together yeah i think so it, it i think that the, it's interesting like the i think one of the most satisfying images 
for a human person, and that's why it's so universal, is a is a straight line with a curvy line around it. Mm-hmm. I think that that's actually. I think we're. I think it's like hard coded into us. Yeah. Like when we see that that it's line, in the DNA, with like a, you might say. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like when you see that, when you see that caduceus kind of structure. It's like, I don't know, as I remember being very young and just drawing that over and over just because mm. there was some weird aspect of it that was very, very satisfying. And mm. I think that when you think of those two together, like, so Christ on the cross is a good example where where Christ is usually actually uh, drawn as a, as a serpentine figure on the cross. But you have that, you have the straight, and then you have the curve which comes and makes and softens it and makes it. A, you know, and is also a kind of dying at the same time. It's not, it's not, it's like there's no going, there's no two ways about it. It's like there's a, a, a kind of letting go, right, of that, of the of the straight, uh, but also attached to it. Like it's weird. The cross obviously is hard to describe because there's too many things going on in there. But I, that my intuition, so, you know, I remember a good example, contrapposto is a good example, right? So, if you have a basic, simple contrapposto that's not too excessive, then you really get that beauty. But if you have someone standing in front of you that is just like a pillar, right, with their two feet like together, and just like, like obviously it's not a natural position, nobody stands like that. But you would feel, ve- it would be very eerie actually to face someone that way. And so the idea is, is, is to find the contrapposto. And if you look at Christian art, there's almost like a good vi- there's a visual discussion about reining in Roman contrapposto, but not eliminating it. So if you look at Byzantine images, the the, the usual the Roman contrapposto. For those Could who don't know, try- contrapposto. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. So that. contrapposto is when you is when you have a figure that stands and then is unbalanced, has their leg out in one way so that their body curves. Okay. If you look at a Baroque image, you'll have extreme contrapposto, right? Like kind of like that. Where, whereas in, in the in the Roman times, it was that's how you would always show a figure, right? It would be like one foot out and one foot straight, and it would make the whole body curve like an S. And if you look at at um, Renaissance, the Renaissance would like recaptured the Roman contrapposto. There's something kind of there's something almost erotic about just the. The, it depends how much you exaggerate it, 